You guys wanted to see a review of the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. And you also wanted to see the new Porsche Cayenne Coupé. Well, we figured, let's show you a Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupé. And we will also show you the direct comparison Cayenne SUV and the Cayenne Coupé. What's the difference in full HD, full screen and full length? Let's go. Let's go. In the front of the Porsche Cayenne Coupé just looks the same as a normal Porsche Cayenne SUV. The turbo of course with a little stronger air intakes here especially in the lower area. This color here is called Mahagoni Brown so it looks really dark but has a brown nuance. We'll soon show you also a lot of different other colors. Headlamps start with LED already with this four dot structure. Optional a dynamic LED package and then optional optional the matrix LED also for more high beam range. 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches is the length both the Cayenne Coupe and the Cayenne SUV. That's no difference but the main difference is the roofline is 2 centimeters flatter and especially goes down here in the rear area that makes this Coupe look as this fixed wing right there and of course this window graphic right there. Also about extra price of 9,000 euros or dollars for the Coupé if you compare it to the Cayenne SUV. Well, but you also get somewhat more extra equipment even for the base versions, for example, 20 inch wheels. However, those ones here are the optional 22 inch wheels in the Spider design. And you also get the PASM as standard. However, still the Coupé will be more expensive. And of course, it's a very expensive car overall. Rest of the design is rather conservative and a round shape right there. Not too many dramatic design lines here with the turbo. Of course, in the rear, the turbo will be more dramatic with those tailpipes coming up very soon. So what do you think here about this coupe roof line? And this is, of course, the second big difference SUV and coupe here with different window line right there. Because it creates less drag, you also need a separated wing then. It folds up. When you get as true speed over 90 kilometers an hour and then it goes up or down 13.5 centimeters again oh and by the way if you see it going up here now this is a so-called cleaning position it does not go all the way up it could possibly going be up because it only goes all the way up when you're driving really really fast then the cayenne turbo of course has some more sporty features like those quad exhaust pipes and they are real ones, not fake. We've seen a lot of fake exhaust pipes recently here, not in this case. And then this typical new Porsche design where this light strip goes all around the vehicle. And also just dimension wise, this Coupe here is always two centimeters wider also than the SUV, so it has a little bit more stance on the road.
And now, first of all, a lava orange vehicle. Yeah, I think it's a matter of taste as for the color. <laughs> what do you think? But I really want to talk about the sports lightweight package because this is installed here on this very vehicle. Let's take a look at the details. It starts with those 22 inch wheels. Different designs are available. This is in the biggest size. Then a carbon fiber roof. It does save some weight, yes, but I mean, considering it's still a two tons vehicle, I'm not really sure if that's really a key factor to save a couple of kilograms of weight. It's just more for the visual part, of course. And comes together with an Alcantara ceiling from the inside. Very beautifully done, sporty atmosphere. But the downside is then you do not have the glass roof, so you cannot see through. And also the whole interior is a little bit darker. But what is brighter are those seats here with the fabric on the inside. Also belongs to this sports lightweight package. And this one will of course be my say, favorite seating option. It stays cooler in summer and also warmer in winter times. And also has this special old school style structure. And my second favorite, this Alcantara steering wheel has a good grip in all situations. Feels cozy and sporty at the same time. Really love it. And last but not least, how those fabric seats look in the rear compartment. Here you can also see this split in the middle part. So this is this two single seat option where it would not be that cozy to sit then in the middle part. And you know here in our longer auto fuel video we really go in detail and also explain you some background information. And one very interesting one is the discussion about the overall weight of the vehicle and which one is sportier, the Cayenne SUV or the Cayenne Coupe. Well, here the Cayenne Coupe it is actually a little bit heavier because this central roof there, which you standardly get with the glass roof, or then with the carbon fiber roof, which we have on this one here with the sports lightweight package. But in both cases, the roof is set in. It's not, you know, belonging to the whole hull structure of the whole vehicle, maybe a little bit, but not in a way as the normal fixed roof would also contribute to the overall chassis stiffness. So, in the coupe, they have to make some parts around the vehicle a little bit stiffer and therefore also a little bit heavier. So the coupe itself has, let's say, you know, not the optimum building form to be sportier than the SUV. Therefore, it would also be a little bit slower, just a tiny notch. That's also the reason, because they didn't want to accept that at Porsche, because when the coupe looks sportier, it's also supposed to drive sportier. Therefore, they put the sports chrono package from standard equipment here with the coupe that evens out the difference when the other one does not have it. And then they also offer this sports lightweight package with the carbon fiber roof, those special uh, wheels, which are also on this vehicle here. They reduce also again some more weight. So the overall weight increase of about like 30, 40 kilograms can be then reduced again to 20 to 30 kilograms. And then you're almost even again and can say it's not less sporty. But, you know, we recently had it also with the A7 versus the A6 sedan at Audi. The sportier building form from the visual aspect does not necessarily mean it's the sportier car. That's a very interesting aspect. But also interesting that they had a lot of effort to even out this difference then once again. Hope you enjoyed also this very special insight. And here you can see the optional carbon ceramic brake now together with the lightweight sports package wheel the special one see how massive they are and also this special carbon ceramic structure again if you're not having a track use you do not have to go for them and of course the extra price is extremely high so uh, other people buy a whole car for that extra price and since they have this special coating as for example standard for the turbo or option for the other cars it's also quite good for the brake dust because it keeps your wheels clean. That would be one advantage <laughs> of those carbon ceramic brakes. And of course, this one ha have even less fading effect, but that would again be more racetrack um, relevant and not really for normal road use. And some more color variation for you with a pure white car. This always somehow fits to a Porsche, I think at least. Also, the coupe, especially now with this round line, works pretty well in white. Or what do you think? Or what about this chalk white color we had already in the Panamera, for example? Would that work for you? So what I have to say is that especially here to the chalk white exterior, those gray fabric seats, they work especially well. So this is a good color combination then. Or a real black car without this brown Margoni tone in there. Or a little bit brighter 
in silver. And we have even more for you. Here you really have to look close. This is this midnight blue, a very dark blue tone. And they have a lot of colors where you cannot really differentiate between black, dark brown or dark blue. So you really have to look up close. At least with the gray, you can really see it's a gray car. And that's the color tour for today. And to show you the lighting signature a little bit better, we have a car inside here. And then you can really see how this signature will play out at night, for example. Pretty impressive. And this one here is the Cayenne Turbo with the normal turbo exhaust, so without the special performance pack option. And I really have to say, in that way, it really looks more impressive than with this optional performance pack special exhaust, black inside, silver ring outside. This one here looks more impressive, doesn't it? What's your take on those? And now we're here with the direct comparison, the Cayenne SUV and the Cayenne Coupe. And you can see, this is really all about this roof line that is falling then right there. Which one is more beautiful to you? I would really like to see your reaction to that in the comments. This one here, by the way, both vehicles are the Cayenne Turbo, so you can really relate to that. And also interesting, both have the very same wheel design, this spider wheel design, but here with the Cayenne SUV, those ones here are 21 inch, and those ones are the biggest 22 inch. So I think 21 still works very well. Or what would be your take? And if we look again in detail, look the flatter A-pillar already and then the overall flatter roof. And also look at this window graphic right there. The window graphic is smaller, has less height than in the SUV. You can really see that now when we pan over because to the SUV, See, the A-pillar is a little bit higher, overall a little bit higher, two centimeters. And then especially look at this window graphic, which is again way higher in the SUV. So that also will make a difference looking from the inside to the outside, for example. And now the direct rear comparison with the Cayenne SUV and the Cayenne Coupe. You can see, of course, different window line right there. This is, of course, way longer here and also a little bit flatter than here. And also interesting, what else can you see? Well, look at the number plate. Here in the KN SUV, it's placed right here. Whereas with the Coupe, it's placed in the lower bumper, which again also makes a visual lower appearance overall. And also interesting, that's you know more about the optional equipment. Here is the standard turbo exhaust, and this one then here is the optional performance exhaust if you look at close. And yeah, as I said, uh, this one here definitely looks more spectacular, I think, but the performance exhaust is supposed to be even louder. Yeah, and the front perspective was missing both here, again, turbos. You can see the bigger air intakes in the lower area. And here, this very vehicle, by the way, also with the sensor and the front camera, but this is just about the extra equipment. It has nothing to do with the difference of SUV and coupe. Well, in a little bit you can already see, because this flatter roof line, you can see a little bit of that already from the front. An even more difference, because with the little bit higher roof line, they also have the roof rails here at the Cayenne SUV. And that makes this, you know, difference a little bit more visual already from the front. But everything that is just, you know, hood-wise, the very same styling and design. So, what's under the hood? Before we talk about this one, let me give you the general overview general overview about the engines so for the coupe here the same as for the kn suv a three liter v6 single turbo with 340 horsepower six seconds is the acceleration figure that's the entry engine based on that one there will also be the plug-in hybrid i can already announce it to you right now so the same also for the coupe a very interesting one because we had about two liters less of consumption for the hybrid nine liters about the other engines about 11 liters on one kilometers very interesting and then there is the 2.9 liter v6 bi turbo with 440 horsepower second less in acceleration about five seconds and then Ta -da, the one we have here right now the four liter v8 turbo so the turbo with the turbo <laughs> you know those porsche turbo names they all have turbos meanwhile but this one here still keeps it the turbo in the very name four liter v8 then here with 550 horsepower and the acceleration figure here then is about four seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and the rest of the technology highlights here for the Cayenne, well, you have an optional air suspension, of course, and 
also a rear axle steering, which is also equipped with the test vehicle we have before you today. How will it play out? We'll tell you in the driving part very soon. is the car key a little bit slimmer than we used to know it for the Kian but it's the same for the SUV and for the coupe keyless entry is also available put your hand right there to close it or inside to open it this car is also equipped with the option of the soft close ah, magic well you can live without it for sure then inside of the doors everything is wrapped tightly as we know from the Porsche design here we got some aluminum, brushed aluminum inserts. Also reasonable space at the inside of the doors. And what I like with this platform, here we got the KN Turbo entry badge. You can see this even entry sill from the entry badge to the floor mat. Same for the platform brothers, the Volkswagen Touareg and the Audi Q7 and the Q8. And it's just a nice entry to the vehicle. This one here has done the animal skin seat, usually standard for the KN. But I've shown you earlier, there's also this fabric option, special for the coupe, inside this sports lightweight package. And when there will later be a GTS version, there will also be some Alcantara at the inside of the seats, if you prefer that. Rest of the interior, sport in here in a rather dark way, as we know from a lot of different Porsches. The steering wheel has a lot of controls indeed. And also this performance knob for the driving modes on the right side. We will experience more of that when we drive the car very soon. I would say, let me get a test inside in the front. Because that one is just the same as in the SUV. You have a lot of space. I mean, it's a big vehicle. You have also this um, option when you close the door that the seat is going to the front again. Yes, quite a lot of space here. You have this glass roof, in this case, still some headroom right there. 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, should you not have subscribed the info. Well, if you have the other roof with the carbon fiber, then of course you have a little bit more headroom, but this is still okay. It will be more interesting how it will play out for the rear. Other than that, electric control for the steering wheel, up and down, also in and out. And I think it's also nice to have it in this way than here with this small knob that's a little bit nicer in a tactile way than before with other Porsches where you had this central control below the steering wheel. It felt a little bit weird, a little bit better right here. And you also have those new turning indicators. They are better just also from the, you know, from, just from the haptical feeling. It's really interesting. The old turning indicators, for example, in the previous generation or previous 911 and so on, they were also making strange sounds, especially when they were propping back here now with a better solution. But you can see, still a classic Porsche solution here with turning the car on on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. But you don't put the key in. This is like, you know, a key style, but to turn... Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe it would be time then also for a start-stop button. Well, what's your take on that? Interior overview. Again, the Porsche design scheme with wrapping stuff tight. Sports chrono package here with the analog clock. Then a big 12.3-inch screen as a central control unit. However, climate control and stuff is still separate. On the left side, you have the classic analog gauge. Zoom on deals to that. And left and right 7-inch screens. This is the basic overview. And... Those panic handles might be making sense, especially for the turbo, because then you can, you know, when you go a little bit faster, you can hold on tight to that. Now details to the infotainment system. Here, when you want to show off the car to your friends in the weekend, then press it once to put up the spoiler or hold it to put it back in. Also here, when you have the outdoor optional air suspension, you can put it to a terrain height, pump it up, y'all. <laughs> 
interesting and it will also go automatically down to a lower position when you drive really fast on the motorway for example phone connection via bluetooth or via apple carplay android auto is not available for the porsches yet then you can here go back to the normal porsche menu let's also take a look at the gps looks like this pretty clear display so you can also browse around it's a quite responsive system it gets really hot by the way the surface here gets really hot when it's warmer so um yeah almost a little bit unpleasant for the finger then and this would be the climate menu again you can control everything almost everything with the knobs below but here where the winds are coming from you have to do that in the screen so this is the infotainment system sometimes a little bit complicated maybe but you get along with it a little bit better the more you controlled it in the lower middle console you still have a lot of control stuff but for example the gps hotkey you know this is the home hotkey but then the gps hotkey is like right over there for nav or like here i'm not sure if i you know why should i do that as a driver and Jumping to the GPS, this is one thing I really use quite a lot as a driver. I'm not sure whether I put it that way. There's a volume jog still behind the shifting lever. Other than that, it's more like inlet in this console. Yes, the temperature knob, that one is still available, also with this nice metal knurling around. And then you have seat heating, seat cooling even available, and suspension settings also in the lower part, for example. And they all give something of a feedback. You hear it and you feel it also just a little bit. Then if we go lower, we also have adaptive cup holders. They're quite good. And then a nice metal knurling also around this 12 volt power supply. The USB ports, I'll soon show you. They're just under this armrest. One detail I really like is this rear mirror because it's frameless. And therefore, it's quite elegant. Instruments, the middle part is analog, left and right side digital and for example, you have a map view on the right side, also comes automatically when you head to the next intersection. Also night driving assistant is optional available. Then you can also check from lap force or g-force in there, consumption meter of course, and also the situation of the car, all wheel drive distribution and so on. So you're quite flexible there to, for the information to be shown. That's the advantage of those digital elements then. A nice option is the head-up display, meanwhile available for all Cayenne versions. It's, by the way, perfectly sharp, just on camera, it's really hard to catch it. You have a standard view, but you can also switch it to a sport chrono view. That's very funny, isn't it? You can slide the middle armrest forward and backward and shake test. It's very well attached. Then normal USB supplies, two actually, to charge your phone or connect to the Apple CarPlay. And you put it right here. This is, by the way, looking like an inductive charging platform, but it is none. So here in this vehicle, I said earlier, we have the glass roof that gives a lot of light in the interior, unlike the carbon fiber roof, which would be just all dark and black. But here, when it gets too hot, we also have this cover right there. It is, again, a fixed glass roof, so you cannot open it. That's the disadvantages. The advantage, then, however, is that you can have it over a wider area of the vehicle. And now it gets really exciting. Let's access the rear together. So. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Let me first show you that. So, there we go. This is the rear seating. And there are two possibilities. This one here is the normal three-seater option for the rear. There's also this single-seater option for the rear. I've shown you that earlier in the other car. This one, of course, makes more sense. You're just more flexible that you can still transport a third person in the rear. So. And, well, the good thing about this platform here, Touareg Q7, Q8 and the Cayenne is you always have a lot of legroom right there. There's no problem. So with four tall adults, there's no problem. Does the middle seat also work? We'll soon check that out. Well, and then the thing is about the coupe, we would expect that I get some problems here with the headroom, but that's actually not the case. So there's still some headroom right there. And I said earlier in the Cayenne SUV, and there I could actually put a fist over my head. That's not possible. Well, I can squeeze it. So you, you lose like this in headroom still if you compare it to the Cayenne SUV. But 
Why is it still possible here? Why is it, you know, somewhat okay from the headroom? They actually put the rear bench three centimeters lower here in the Cayenne Coupe. And so you can still sit here quite well. This is actually the secret. And is it less comfortable from the seating then? Not necessarily. Maybe a little bit because I think this bench here, if you compare it here, the Coupe versus the SUV, this one here, goes a little bit more backward. I think in the SUV you sit a little bit, yeah, a little bit higher and more upright. So that's the catch. I think you can still live with that. It's still decent in comfort, but indeed, I think I just felt a little bit more comfortable in the Cayenne SUV. Again, it was good for the comparison because we've been shuttled here to this location in a Cayenne SUV in the rear. Never we can also very well compare. By the way, you can also change here the angle of the rear seat. So you can make it a little bit more upright or a little bit more backward for sleeping like position. And this will also be the way to flip the seat completely from this area. So that's possible. You cannot vary it in length. <laughs> we had some visitors right there. What else? We have some outside isofix on the outside seats. Then we have cup holes which are not adaptive. You can put this middle head restraint up if you like. Well, can I sit here on the middle part? Of course, there's this big all-wheel drive tunnel, so I have to put my feet next to it. And this is actually quite okay. Of course, it gets a little bit close in here with the head. But yeah, I mean, for shorter trips or so, it's okay. So you can also use this car with four adults. And last but not least, and we have to turn on the power for that, because here in the rear, we, own, we have two more USB supplies, another 12 power supply, and then there's a separate climate unit, if you want also with seat cooling and seat heating. Oh, and an interesting feature, by the way, it's also an option, are those shades for the rear passengers, electronic. They can only be controlled when the engine is literally running, by the way. Hey, there we go. Shade up, shade down, shade up, shade down. <laughs> So, what about the trunk right here? Let's open it. And this is 625 liters up to 1540. That's 150 liters less than with the Cayenne SUV. Of course, the biggest limitation is the height right here, but I think, you know, you can still live with that. I can also show you that here with the backpack. Well, you have to put here. Here it would not be possible. Here then it's okay also, you know, to fit it with this cover right there. So you can still live with it. Of course, you lose some height if you compare it to the original KN version. I can also show that in the measurements, because here the lowest position would be about 40 centimeters. That's still somewhat okay. And here then you get a little bit higher to the cover of about 50 centimeters. In length, the normal length here is just about a meter and also in width a little bit more than a meter. You can also lift this one right here. You can see the replacement tire would also fit. Here, if you have the air suspension, you can also lower the vehicle a little bit to easy the loading. And on the left side, by the way, there's also, surprise, 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 CD changer. Hmm, very interesting. Haven't seen that recently in the trunk of the week, but you know, where the, else I want to put it. 12 volt power supply is also available right here, by the way. And now, well, to flip the seats, I really have to go around and use those levers I've shown you earlier, then push them down. Well, that, you know, always takes some time and I have to go to, around to the other side. And here we go. So, and that's now, let me just access it here. And when the seat would be as I would be driving, as a tall person, this one is here on the maximum setup of 1,540 liters. So here we go. Let's into my driver's seat about 1 meters and 80 in length. You might ask yourself, why is this liter figure from those coupe versions and you know the high versions, why don't they differ them more? Because the leader figures are actually really measured, not up till the, the top roof of the vehicle, but just under the closed cover. And that's the reason why those coupe versions, for example, or other sportier versions of the same vehicle don't vary that much in a leader figure. But if you, of course, load it up to the ceiling, then the original you know, hatch or 
SUV versions are of course a little bit better even in the luggage performance. You know, yeah, what do you lose overall with a Cayenne Coupe here? Not too much, of course, it's a little bit less practical, but I think, you know, in a region where you can still say you can easily live with that. And for a direct interior comparison, this one here is the Cayenne SUV in the front without any special roof, just a normal roof. And that leaves plenty of headroom right here in the front. Then again here our Cayenne Coupe. Little bit less definitely because, you know, overall flatter roof and also with a glass roof. The glass roof has in the front even a little bit less headroom than the carbon roof because this one here has this shade and therefore they need to drop a little bit in height because you can apply the shade but still you know somewhat reasonable also for taller people will fit in the front and here again the Cayenne SUV first of all you can slide the bench forward and backward that's very important maybe for you and then headroom again with no panoramic roof this one here has plenty of headroom and I definitely sit higher in the legroom there's no difference actually that's totally the same but you know you sit a little bit higher it's a little bit more comfortable i think and here again cayenne coupe with the glass roof and you see it's definitely closer here with the headroom but still fits with one is 86 or six foot one and then yeah because the bench is a little bit lower and it falls a little bit more backward you feel a little bit more you know it's a little bit less comfortable i think from a seating position but still you know decent comfort overall just if you take the direct comparison and you cannot slide the bench forward and backward because they put it a little bit lower then it doesn't exactly fit with the mechanism to slide it back and forth they had in the suv short agile performance part and we go to sport plus here to show you the launch control it's a little bit uphill and by the way there's more than 50 allowed here so that's just what the system's showing at the moment let's go <laughs> that's, that was already more than 100 kilometers an hour and did you see how the car was like woof, like a spaceship and that was uphill so yeah that's the difference you have when you have the turbo wow hardly ever felt such an acceleration in an suv and again a little bit uphill really crazy that is really crazy Whew. soon we can also get to the normal driving part to show more everyday driving situations here again we have some more nice corners for you and that shows how the steering is set up in a very natural way really gives a good feeling makes this car a little bit smaller as for the feeling beautiful also with the fork road a little bit wet and I mean even in, at those wet conditions the launch control worked pretty well so it reduces also the slip and together with this rear axis steering that works very well especially at those lower speeds the car gives a very nice agile handling and here also driving uphill all the time there's no lag or no delay whatsoever from the acceleration you immediately have everything you can possibly get as for the power wow Thomas's driving lounge with a Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupe with a Porsche Cayenne Coupe Turbo. However, you want to take it. And of course, you can somewhat start it silently, but the turbo will always be a little bit louder. Then again, we have this performance exhaust right there. Here's another one in lava orange coming towards us. But with this turbo, you know, you always have the sport mode, sports plus mode. If I would be even right now, next to the old lady, I would press the throttle and maybe cause a heart attack, but I won't do that. <laughs> but you know, that's the thing of this car. Here when I'm in a neighborhood, you can leave it in a normal driving mode and be somewhat silent, that's still okay. As soon as you get out of the village, 
then you can let it fly a little bit more. There's also this rear axle steering built in here. And that means I have more agility when I'm driving at slower speed because then the rear axle is going across. So that reduces the turning circle, for example, really helpful. At higher speeds, the rear axle goes, or the rear wheels go in the same direction as the front wheels to increase the stability. Especially when you park in and out and stuff, it's a really useful option. This vehicle is also equipped with the air suspension, together with 22 inch wheels. As long as the road is good, that's really fine. Also, the air suspension evens out the effect of stiff, big wheels. However, if you want a little bit more comfort, you would stick with smaller wheels. And of course, you have a little bit more tire buffer. And then together with the air suspension, you have a quite nice ride. So this car can also be comfortable. You have this upright seating position and somewhat, you know, a normal big SUV seating position. So you can compare it also to the sister models, to the Volkswagen Touareg and also the Audi Q7, Audi Q8. Indeed, all of those models feel somewhat similar. The Cayenne then has this sportier touch. That's also what the brand says. And so they try to make it a little bit stiffer as for the suspension. And of course, they put even more power in it. So let's see when I'm going over this bridge now. It's actually quite okay from the comfort still. Again, the air suspension does a very good job. When, just when you have some bumps, then you feel those bigger rims. But that's, you know, something you can, you can still live with. Great that the steering is also very progressive. See here when I'm, for example, here now in the roundabout, I don't have to steer that much. So that gives you a very natural steering feeling. And again, you can, in most situations, keep both hands at the steering wheel. That's also very important. So although it's a heavy car, it always tells you, yeah, you know, you can go in the slalom and enjoy it a little bit more. So now we get outside the city. And again, I know how loud this exhaust is, so I'll wait until we pass those cyclists until they accelerate it out. So now we can go from 40 kilometers to 100 in the sports mode. Let's go. Oh, that's already it. <laughs> yeah, you're now also testing the brakes. Because now again, we are at slower speeds. And that's again, really what this car is about. Now again, silent, comfortable, upright seating position. And then you can soon go to the next extreme. And this is also the difference when you drive the turbo. Every Cayenne version you could possibly buy has good performance, has good acceleration. This one here then two seconds less in the acceleration figure from zero to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour than a base Cayenne would be. And this guy is really overtaking me when I'm at 30 kilometers an hour here. Well, so I really try to keep with the speed limit, especially when you're driving such a vehicle, because the police, you know, is maybe paying a little bit more attention to that. I always see the speed that is allowed here, also in the head-up display, and then also in the left instruments. That's also pretty helpful, especially because the noise installation is really good. You don't have to raise your voice that much. Also, when you're at higher speeds, no problem. And yeah, that of course increases the danger of being caught on speed cameras when you're actually driving faster than you're expecting. So always check the speed. Again, it's a very silent vehicle when you let it roll. And when you're just listening to this very good noise dampening, then of course this loud exhaust when you really approach it. Again, you can do it right here with the driving modes, Sport or Sport Plus. The exhaust system goes on on the Sport mode, but you can also, for example, keep it in the normal driving mode and just activate the special exhaust node here. Then you can just enjoy a comfortable ride, but also tell the people on the outside, hello, I'm a big exhaust guy, I'm coming right now, <laughs> if you want that. The sport mode will also change how the RPMs go up. For example, from the whole driving characteristic in the Sport Plus mode will make it even a little bit more extreme. But at least that's what a Porsche engineer told me once. When you are in the sport mode, the exhaust sounds better than in the Sport Plus. 
because best exhaust sound does not always mean that it's the best for the performance and in the Sport Plus mode they usually trim everything to the performance side and not necessarily just for the sound experience. It's also a very interesting aspect. So those instruments here are a little bit blocked by the steering wheel as I have it in this position. It's even worse in the new 911. Here it's still okay but they somehow had to find a compromise between keeping it in some of the old school style, the retro style and offering those new digital gauges. So that's then where you end up with. Is it a difference driving the coupe and the SUV? Yeah, that was a good question initially. And now we can also accelerate it out again. And well, you know, this kick down is more, it's not about any turbo lag or something, it's more about the gear shifting you do. You, know, you can also shift back the gears yourself. Here for some second gear now, 60 to 100. Then shift up yourself. That's of course a lot of fun. And then you're of course gone and no one else can follow you. This is really sports car performance alike, especially here with the turbo. And of course, this even harsher exhaust note, always braking for birds, watch out. This shifting pedal experience, by the way, is really nice because the feedback you get from the shifting pedal is really smooth and somehow crisp at the same time. I really liked it, so they did a great job in giving a good feedback from that. Agile the car is here where we can also overtake. Gear shift down. Oh, that's really close here. So you see the car is somewhat, yeah, better not do that right here. Yeah, that's the problem of the bigger SUV. Maybe a Macan would have fitted there better, but uh, I don't want to scratch that paint here of the vehicle. <laughs> so shifting back yourself is always a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. Stop sign. I think that after that we have another chance to overtake. Here by the way driving in the Steiermark region today and that's a special region in Austria and they have some great pumpkin seed oil here. I really enjoy that always you know over a salad or something when I'm here and of course they have some beautiful wine yard landscape that's also what the region is famous for. So very beautiful one and quite often also with a very nice weather that's why the wine is growing here in, you know, in such a shape. So um, we will always enjoy a very good wine here too. And now it's overtaking time. Now in this case it's really good to have a powerful engine because then the overtaking process also goes quite quickly and we have it just done. That's pretty cool. Um, this acceleration is of course so seamless, the power is always right there, especially if you use the shifting pedals on your own and just shift back then yourself. Yeah, I mean, this is of course a difference to the base engines and also the, even to a 2.9 liter V6, but in most of the situations you might experience in your everyday driving life, hmm, it's really hard to use all this power. Maybe in Germany when you have like open space motorway or something, but most of the time you will be still somewhat limited and not be able to floor it all out. And of course also a normal petrol engine would be enough. You don't need the high highest spec turbo actually. And also pricing wise if you think about you know, when the base can start at 75,000 euros and the turbo starts at 150, so what, you know, this extra power, this two seconds less in acceleration does not justify double, like double increase in price. That's just not fair for the customer. That's just the reason where they say, ah, oh, you know, when you buy a turbo, you don't care about money anyway, so our profit margin can be higher. That's the, you know, how Porsche earns money. Best, perform best price performance, and that's also the best seller worldwide, will be just the entry level three liter V6 engine. Then again, back to the initial question, does it drive just the very same coupe and SUV? Mm, it's maybe li like the question between Audi A7 and Audi A6. Mm, yeah, you know, it's more or less the same indeed. You feel maybe some slight nuances here and there, 
because the chassis is a little bit different but you really have to drive the cars after each other directly and then to feel a little bit of a difference but driving wise there would be no reason to go for this one and not for the SUV so that's more or less the thing you need. I think you know it's not very low sonorous frequency it also indeed has this you know high frequency turbo sound or what's your take on that circle and that's really because of the rear axle suspension quite okay now the camera system with a very good resolution here right there fake drone view from above then the main rear view camera especially here in this drone view from the side cameras which are mounted at the side mirrors really good resolution you can very well see where you're actually steering your vehicle oh we can see that the wing is still up so again this rear axle steering one of the best options that is available for this vehicle I think because it makes it so much more flexible and very well to use it in, in your everyday driving life and you know, at some point we're in Austria today so there are no autobahns where we could float out like 200 kilometers or something um, so we stay you know at like mid speed levels here of course that's not the primary region for this turbo but the acceleration was quite nice and also sound wise so say goodbye from this today's driving part with another acceleration here in the woods you can enjoy the sound once more and this acceleration together with us well, what do you think here about the Cayenne Turbo or the Cayenne Coupe or both Cayenne Turbo Coupe Cayenne Coupe Turbo which way would you actually name it? Which way around? And before we get to our final conclusion, what is the consumption conclusion for today? Well, of course, if you really hammer it, then it goes like way beyond, more like, you know, towards like 17, 18 liters or something. But if you want to drive this car more economically and just, you know, like steady motorway speed or so and not push really, then it's, that's quite astonishing, scores the same consumption figure than the 3 liter V6 and the 2.9 liter V6 by turbo. So this one here with the turbo also as a like normal minimum consumption, normal driving, 11 liters on one kilometers, that's 21 mpg US or 26 mpg UK. That's somewhat okay and one reason for that is bigger displacement so then i can keep the car at a lower rpm and therefore also not that high consumption and this v8 here also has a cylinder on demand technology that means when just going rather steady not so much acceleration actually half of the cylinders are being shut down so it really runs on four cylinders only then and also interesting technology detail it's not that like one side of the v 
is being shut down and the other one is running, it's like 2-2 two, two each, so they still get like a harmonious distribution, so there's no extra rattling or vibrations or so. So they really keep it also still in a V-Way, but then a V4. So obviously it worked. And it shows again that more displacement does not necessarily mean more consumption. You just have more consumption when you use all the power that you have available here. And now to our conclusion for the day with the Porsche Cayenne Coupé. In this case also the Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupé. From the exterior, difference the Cayenne Coupé to the Cayenne SUV, as I've been naming that one throughout the day. No, it's more that you have here this more put-up 911 style, if you prefer that. Maybe you also prefer just the Cayenne SUV. My personal take would still be the SUV. Which one would yours actually be? Then on the interior, they're of course both similar and the practicability you lose here is still somewhat okay so they also had some effort like you know with putting the bench rear bench a little bit lower that you don't lose too much headroom or so so you can still really live with that have almost the same practicability of course the suv in this case will do even a little bit better driving wise they're also pretty equal it is still a big suv but it's also a sporty one and in this very segment here the porsche Cayenne still sets somewhat the benchmark of sporty riding with those 22 inch wheels, of course, you do lose comfort. The air suspension evens it out a little bit. But still, if you want more comfort, you would stick, for example, with those base 20 inch wheels. Or maybe 21 could also be an uh, alternative as for that. And then, of course, the question is turbo or one of the lower specs. This one here has more punch, yes, but the other ones are already a little bit faster. You can actually get the same exhaust sound if you go for the same exhaust um, uh, option. So that's also possible with the lower spec version. My tip would be also price performance wise, just go with the base V6. This one is also totally sufficient in power. Or maybe also with the PHEV that will also be coming up here for the Coupe version because you can save fuel. Even if you're not recharging frequently, of course making more sense, if you then, for example, for your commuting to work or so, also recharge it then at home or at work, then of course it makes more sense. However, we got you some insight about the different colors, also about the different engine choices. And please also tune into our other reviews of the Porsche Cayenne. We have the PHEV review. We also have the base V6 in the review. We also have the Cayenne S. Then you can also compare those engine choices, which one you should maybe go for, or if you're just interested in another Cayenne review, so far, all the SUVs, the first one here today with the Coupe, also more will follow here on Autogrefew and therefore stay subscribed, stay tuned. Also hit the bell and also see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.